Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome back to Make, Repair, Recycle and Part 3 of the DIY Sim Wheel Build. So in Part 2, we had the framework together, we had the wheel turning, the computer was seeing it was there and it worked. And we did a little bit of testing and we found a massive squeak in the framework, which was hideous. But that's prototype, that's what you do. You make something, you see if it works and then you move on. So where you find me now is the wiring, as you can see, has been tidied up uh, and the motor controller and the Leonardo unit has been mounted. The wiring's a little bit tidier and uh, with the addition of some cable ties is now out of the way. It's not going to get caught in anything mechanical. Nothing really mechanical has changed in the framework itself. Uh, I think last time we saw the bearings have been added and I'll slice in some footage here of me actually using it. I've also changed the hub again. This is um, the third iteration of the hub. The first two, the first one wasn't straight. Uh, so the gear cog was sort of doing this, which meant the belt was going, the chain was going loose tight, loose tight, which wasn't very good. So on the third iteration, that seems to work and the tightness of this screw is critical because this one seems to work loose. This screws into a hole in the tube and is the, the way that the drive is transmitted from the, the chain and the sprocket into the tube, into the steering. The only real major change to the mechanical framework, as you can just see here, is the addition of these bearings, which I was waiting for when uh, to try and fit in the last video, but they hadn't arrived yet. What these two bearings have done is taken all of the slack out of the chain. Now, when this is in use and the motor is trying to turn the wheel forward and backward in your hand as you go over rumble strips or bumps or you hit a wall, any slack in the chain uh, means that the, the wheel in the motor, the gear is turning in the motor and taking up the slack. So if there's any slack in the chain, you can feel it rattling back and forth just taking up the slack of the chain, you can't move it. Until such time as you hit a wall. And what happens is it moves really quickly. Certainly if you've got the feedback turned up to 90, 100%, it moves really quickly. It's after you hit something, so you're gonna feel judder. The slack in the belt or in the chain meant that it took that up first and then kept going, which meant it had more uh, momentum. Uh, and on the first iteration of this without the belting, actually bent uh, an M6 screw. So uh, again, I've not tried to measure. So the addition of these two pulleys on either side of the belt, or either, side of it, either side of the chain, means that there is now no slack in the chain at all. So everything that the, the motor is trying to turn is transmitted directly into the steering wheel. And it actually means that the level of feedback with this is, I think, bearing in mind it's a home brew homemade device it's actually really good I, I think there's there seems to be more feel in this than there was with uh, my old fan attack this monstrosity which which was a lovely wheel I'm sure it was lovely when it was um, first built but it's very old so I think there's more feel in this. You can, I think you can pick up corrections in the car from bumps or oversteer or understeer. It just feels, a, just, you've got more feel in your hands. Now, whether a stronger motor or a stronger, um, yes, yeah, whether a stronger motor would make any, any difference in that because you've got more, more power, more feel. I don't know, I mean, that's that maybe something we look at later on as this journey continues um, but really the main development work with this in the last few weeks around life and work has been on here 
So, what we've added here now is a plate with some buttons in, which work, and these uh, magnet, new to new magnet powered trigger shifters. Uh, the design of this is based on parts I had laying around, as with all the rest of this. The switches that are in the actual uh, paddle shifters were two um, limit switches, micro switches, from the electric scooter, where the, the chain and the motor came from. So, I don't know if you can hear it, but as you get nearer to the that click is actually the micro switch. And then the magnet is installed on the back. I'll show you the other side. And it's the magnet that just pulls it back to its return position. So they took a little while to make because uh, they're quite uh, handmade, shall we say. No 3D printers here. So hopefully what you can see here is the aluminium plate, which is the backing plate and the hub. Mounted to the backing plate is, you can't quite see these, but there's three nuts in here. One or two at the back, one at the front. The one at the front sits between these two plates. And don't don't judge my welding, okay? It's just, it does the job. It doesn't need to be, you know, it's not Instagram welding here. So the two plates, um, either side, nut, there's an M6 nut in the middle and two M8 nuts at the back welded together. The tactile switch, micro switch, is bit screwed between these two plates. There's one of the screws you can see there. And then over the top of that is this piece of uh, one inch square, 16 gauge box section, cut down uh, to be a channel over the top. Through the middle is a stainless steel, doesn't have to be stainless steel, could be normal steel, but a stainless steel sleeve that sits over the M6 bolt that mounts it at the front. And then on top of that is a plate. Now the magnet is glued into the channel, or the box section, which is now a channel, um, so that is pulling itself up to this stop at the back, it causes that return function. It's not particularly pretty, I might improve on this, you know, it was a, it is a prototype, might do something different, um, but it works. And I've had hmm, probably 30-40 minutes using it the other night, and the only thing I've found so far is I probably need to lock tight the nuts on the back of this because they keep falling off. Uh, the wiring, as you will notice, is a thing of beauty. I mean, look at that. Um, I haven't even taken the tails off yet. Um, this is all wired into a piece of um, BCB prototype perf board, depending uh, on where you live in the world. So all of the connections come into here. They're then shared into this. Um, lovely curly cord which i think was a, a phone replacement i found on ebay um, but the idea with this is eventually what well, i might find a better way of tidying this up for now it, it does the job it doesn't look pretty but never mind put that together and then i've got this ethernet connector and the housing of this will be mounted into the board here somewhere so if I need to take the wheel off in the future, once this is all tied up, it's a case of take the bolt out, unconnect it. It's not hardwired into the, the Arduino. And with the curly cord on there, you've got a fair amount of play should you wish to get yourself all crossed up. I'm not really into drifting, so I'm, I'm not going to be doing big wheel spins and things with this, but it just gives it a little bit of slack. Um, so I don't damage the pins anywhere. So, that's that part. So as it stands now, this lovely homemade device actually works. As I said, I've done 30, 40 minutes um, at a time in Project Cars 2 uh, with various different old cars, new cars, and it works fine, it works great, considering it's homemade out of stuff bought off eBay and um, a little bit of soldering works really well. So the next steps really with this is just to go and use it. Uh, play with it, use it in different games, change different settings, because mechanically and electronically it works. It's talking to the computer and everything's everything's good. Oh, the wiring needs a bit of tidying up. The nice thing with the EMC development software, other than it 
only cost a tenner, well, ten dollars, is that it also comes with not only just the controller for the steering, but you've got a 16 button matrix that then all of these tactile switches and paddle shifts can operate. You do have the ability also to wire in your own design of pedals uh, and gear shifter if you wanted to. Now, I've already got uh, Fanatec pedals, so we won't do that, but I think, to be honest, I think the guy who develops, or the person to develop that software, um, has done a blinding job. You know, really does work. So, hats off to EMC Developments, link will be in the description. Next steps with this, I think the only thing I really want to look at now is the chain drive. Obviously the chain drive came with the motor from the scooter, so it made sense to use it. But going forward, I think the chain drive is, it's slightly noisy and clanky, I mean it's not deafening, um, but it's, you know, it's perhaps a little bit annoying. And there's always going to be a, an element of slack in a chain because you've got the fit up of the, the chain into the cogs and things. So. Although I feel that there is better um, feel in for, in the steering from this compared to the Fanatec, there's probably a little bit still being lost in this. You're always going to lose something in the drive system if it's not direct drive. So what I'm going to look at next is, is potentially changing this to a, a belt system using what's called a taper lock. So rather than drilling holes and screwing things in, you actually uh, attach the pulley onto the shaft just using compressive force um, around the around the tube now they're not hugely expensive I've not used taper locks without keyways before so it'll be interesting to see if it can grip um, and the other change is obviously I think the shaft is probably a little bit long maybe move it back a little bit and I've also got a 20 mil steel shaft um, which is why I've used 20 mil bearings um, and packed it out with, with tape because in the future I thought well maybe if the you know because this is aluminium whether anything can grip onto it with the same strength that you can with the steel shaft because it's a it's a harder surface finish but we'll see so I shall leave you in this part with some more of my um, expert <laughs> racing skills uh, and showing off the wheel um, built by me, powered by EMC Developments. So, thanks for watching. Hit like, subscribe, hit the bell, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.